Hello, and thank you for joining me. In this video, I will discuss the latest so-called game changer in the war in Ukraine, namely the decision by the Western ruling elites to supply F-16 aircraft to the Ukrainian government. Western mainstream media, along with so-called experts in the West, are again making grand and unsubstantiated claims by saying that the presence of F-16s over the battlefield in Ukraine will constitute a game changer. Well, in previous videos of mine, I cited each and every so-called game changer in the war thus far. Hence, I have no intention to put myself through the laborious process again. Suffice to say that Western mainstream journalists, coupled with so-called experts in the West, are merely useful idiots whose words are worthless. Those men and women say what they say because they comprise one of the entities which makes up the Western ruling elites. And they are bestowed with riches and other benefits by the core group of the elites for peddling disinformation, including laughable claims that Russian jets and Russian drones have been brought down in Ukraine by old age pensioners armed with hunting rifles and by housewives armed with jars of tomatoes. What I will do, however, is explain why the presence of F-16 aircraft in Ukraine will have zero impact on the course of the war there. Firstly, it takes between nine and 12 months to teach a Western pilot how to fly an F-16, which is a brutal reality for the Ukrainian armed forces, given that time is not on its side, what with the Ukrainian high command running low on soldiers. Over 300,000 Ukrainian troops have died in the war thus far, including 45,000 who were killed during the last few months as a result of the calamitous counteroffensive, if we can call it this, by the Ukrainian army against impregnable Russian defense fortifications in the oblasts of Zaboroshi and Donetsk. Secondly, that it takes between nine and 12 months to teach a Western pilot to fly an F-16 is compounded further for the Ukrainian Air Force by the fact that Ukrainian pilots have only ever flown Soviet-era jets. Now, it is one thing to fly a MiG-29 and another to fly a F-16. NATO aircraft are far more difficult to learn to fly because of the complex technology on board in the cockpit. Accordingly, it is the case that to train a Ukrainian pilot to fly an F-16 will take much longer than the aforementioned nine to 12 months it takes to teach a Western pilot to fly the jet. Thirdly, whilst it will take in excess of nine to 12 months to teach a Ukrainian pilot to fly an F-16, it will take additional time for the said pilot to master the aircraft, to become a lethal operator of the jet. To achieve that will require, assuming it is possible at all, more months of intense training. All the while, more and more of the Ukrainian armed forces and the Ukrainian military industrial complex is devoured by the Russians. Fourthly, for the F-16 to have even a moderate impact on the war in Ukraine, the Ukrainian Air Force would have to be supplied with well over 100 of the aircraft, possibly hundreds. Now, that is something that the West cannot and will not do. But hypothetically speaking, 
Let us say that the West supplies 150 F-16s to the Ukrainian Air Force. Russia's response would be to deploy double that amount of its own advanced aircraft, such as the Su-27 and the Su-35, to neutralize the threat. And finally, and finally, however many F-16s appear over Ukraine, these will be met by not just Russian Su-27s and Su-35s, but also by Russian air defense systems, such as the Pantsir, the S-350, and the S-400. The performance of the aforementioned Russian air defense systems in Ukraine have demonstrated not just their potency, but also their superiority over all other air defense systems in the world, such as the American Patriot system. Russian air defense systems have been the scourge of America's HIMARS and Britain and France's storm missiles, rendering these NATO missiles virtually ineffective. In, in conclusion, F-16s do not and will not constitute a game changer in the war in Ukraine. The Russian armed forces and the Russian military indust industrial complex is a colossus, which is slowly, methodically and mercilessly tearing the guts out of both the Ukrainian military and NATO. Nothing can dislodge the Russian army from Ukraine, and nothing can prevent the Russian army from eventually capturing either all or most of Ukraine and absorbing this to form a new and enlarged Russia. As for Western mainstream journalists and so-called experts on Russia and military matters in the West, they are as deceitful and shameful as they are moronic and useless. Each and every time they open their putrid mouths, rivers of lies and self-aggrandizement come gushing out. Hear me when I say that those wretched men and women will, in due course, claim another game changer in Ukraine possibly the deployment of British Challenger tanks to the battlefield there. But then what else is to be expected from the mouthpieces of the Western ruling elites who know only too well that the Ukrainian armed forces have been losing from the very start of the war, but who will say the complete opposite so as to, in quotation marks, justify the West's ongoing support to the Ukrainian government. Support which is actually about preserving the wealth, influence and power of the globalists, and which is taking a horrific toll on the lives of hundreds of millions of hardworking people in Western countries. Thank you, as ever, for taking the time to listen to my analysis and submissions.